today we're crossing the Seven Mile Bridge and we're headed to a little key called Pigeon Key. I'm not sure if you can see it. I'm driving, but we are passing the little pigeon key. So the beginning of the Seven Mile Bridge, I go into Key West. There's a Pigeon Key train depot that you can take a ride. And here is history of Pigeon Key. Of course, it's not a real train, but it's pretty cool. And I'm looking forward to the guided tour. Learn more about Flackers. There's plenty of parking down here by the train depot. So if you don't want to take the little bus in from Sunshine Key or somewhere on of the other keys, you can drive in and park right here. One of the really cool things that I steal from the tour guides is the fact that between 1908 and 1912, it was one of Henry Flagler's many railroad construction camps. This five acre island housing over 400 gentlemen every night for those four years. When you go into our beautiful museum, you will see photos of just about everyone that's ever lived on the island in that 100 year history. So please go take a look and that building is air conditioned. Okay? <laughs> so go do that. The other really cool thing about Pigeon Key Island, y'all, that most folks don't know, is that from January all the way through August of every year, it's not uncommon to see 50, 60 kids on the island. It is a marine science camp for kids from all over the country, in fact, the world. I believe there's a high school group there today. So we're gonna go up on that two mile stretch. That two mile stretch, y'all, just had its one year anniversary, okay? It took over five years to complete at a cost of over $44 million. We are so very blessed to have it. Um, once we get about a half mile from the end of the, um, um, I'm sorry, end of the island there, on the golf side, my right side, take a look, because there's been some big man rays and rays out there. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to see them fairly easy today. When we get to the end of that two mile stretch, y'all, if you've never had the blessing to see the original overseas highway, we'll drive on it. It is nicknamed the Highway of Mares due to its 22 foot wide only span, y'all, okay? This beautiful key has caught my attraction every time we've crossed the Seven Mile Bridge. And I'm finally here. It's a very tiny island, but absolutely gorgeous. A lot of history here. You can just about see the whole island just from the dock. So there's one end of it. And if you gently pan, pulling my finger, there is the other end of the key. We're staying out there, right at the end of that bridge. So if you like history and want to know more about Flagger, this is a wonderful tour to take. I love the idea that if you want to go to a marineology summer camp, this is an amazing hands-on camp to attend. Looks like it's lunchtime for the kids that are at summer camp here. All the buildings here are painted flagger yellow or white. Someone's daughter was uh, got married and they got one leave. <laughs> what are you going to do with kids? Okay? <laughs> So there was a little building here. It had been used for storage, and then there was a handyman living in it. So they took it over, fixed it up very, very cute, and uh, that became their place to live for a while. Davy Jones, the diving suit is over 60 years old. Looks really heavy. So sad. This is marine debris found on Pigeon Key. It's a big body of water. Looks like a swimming pool from the bridge. It's a holding tank. Check out how clear the water is here today. Supposedly there's a shark in this holding tank, but I haven't seen him. Lots of little fish. They say this is a great photo app. You can see the new bridge, the old bridge, and the bridge for the cars. So we'll try it out. So there's the old bridge and the new bridge. Two miles that way, and two miles back. You can walk to Little Pigeon Key. It's pretty awesome that these railings are made out of the old railroad tracks. 
Now this is a little piece of paradise. Can you see the birds and the buzzards? In uh, 1513, uh, the Spanish were sailing around as they did. They were great sailors, great explorers, and uh, they were looking for things of value here in the Keys. Uh, they were not looking for gold or silver. They were looking for fresh water. So the only thing they found of any interest at all was a large flock of white-crowned pigeons. And uh, while I'm sure they barbecued a couple, uh, not exactly what they were looking for. Uh, but they named the island Cayo Paloma, which means Pigeon Key. Uh, in 1830, nothing happened here. But 1,500 miles away, up in upstate New York, a man called Henry Flagler was born. So he went into business with his friend John. And of course, that would be John D. Rockefeller. <laughs> and they started a little, little oil business. <laughs> and in three and a half years, that oil business turned into Standard Oil. In 10 years, Standard Oil became the biggest, richest, most powerful corporation on the planet. So they had to go to um, Congress. They had to say things they didn't want to say and answer questions they didn't want to answer. And when it was over, Henry basically said, phooey, who needs this garbage? And he retired. And you know that he kept one third of all the stock of the most uh, the richest corporation on the planet. Well, uh, once again, life has a way of changing things. Uh, in 1895, Florida experienced the Great Freeze. It was the worst freeze Florida had ever experienced. The story goes that Miss Julia Tuttle sent Henry a box, and in the box was a spray of orange blossoms and this very poetic letter saying that Henry it did not freeze down here. Please bring your train. It's like the Garden of Eden here. It's just beautiful. We're in paradise. There's no reason for you not to bring your train. Well, in reality, she didn't do any of that. There was no box. There was no flowers. There was no letter. She sent a rather terse telegram. I am paraphrasing, but she basically said, did not freeze. Bring your train. Yours truly, Julia. I mean, that was it. And the state of Florida being still dead broke, uh, desperately needing infrastructure, but being land rich, most of the land, most of Florida was still considered wilderness, while the land being owned by the state and not by any individuals. So they made the announcement that any man who built a railroad, for every one mile that they built, the state of Florida would give them 8,000 acres of land. Can we go to Key West? So a chief engineer, pretty sure he's going to get fired, says, well, chief, I think we can, but I don't think we should. And I said, well, why not? We can do it, why not do it? He said, it would just cost way too much money. And he said, oh, for goodness sakes, I didn't answer that. I got that. <laughs> and here was his whole answer. We're going to Key West, boys. <coughs> that was it. Now, when Henry decided to do this, he did not uh, take any partners, and he did not sell any shares. Henry reached into his pocket, and he pulled out a railroad. When they were building the railroad that went to sea, this was one of Henry Flagg's uh, 80 plus work camps down here in the Keys. Uh, this is the only one that survives. This is the only one who still has the original buildings. The men got $1.50 a day in wages for a mere 10 hour work day in this heat. And of course it was a six day work week. So uh, while we're talking about money during uh, this whole discussion, always times it by 25 to give you a better idea of what that would have meant in today's money. We had a lot of black workers for a very simple reason. Henry Flagler hired black and white alike and he paid them the same amount. So the black workers who were in here, uh, from all that I have been able to find out, they worked in the kitchen. This is my favorite building on the island. It is one of the original buildings. It was brought here in 1908. 
It was the barracks for the gentlemen. It was called a section gang house. 64 men lived in there uh, in a double row of bunk beds. Now, when the 35 hurricane came and uh, they weren't going to rebuild, the state of Florida was in the process of building automobile roads. So there were automobile roads all throughout the Keys, but then you would have to get on a ferry and go to the next island or a couple islands down. The blue plates on the bottom and the little short I beams were all that you would see when this was a railroad. One set of rails going down, and then you turned around and came back again. So the first thing they did was put in these long I beams, and you can see the supports for them. They pulled off the rail. Those rails are now the guardrail. Uh, they put down the platform, and then they paved it. The assistant paint foreman's house, 1920, all these little houses were made and built in the 1920s um, without paint. The paint is to preserve it for today. Modern air. Now the building over there, the little yellow building, is now our museum, but it was where the assistant bridge tender lived with his wife and two kids. And the bigger house next to it was the bridge tender's house. Now, he didn't have a bigger house, he didn't have a bigger job, he just had more kids. Uh, this building over here was the bridge foreman. Obviously, he was in charge of everything that was going on with maintenance. This particular shade of yellow was a paint that when they put it on metal, it would show the rust the most. So if you painted something, you started getting that little rust bloom, you knew you had to go over there and do something. The most important thing to keep this bridge healthy was to keep painting it. So they would start, down at this end of the bridge. They would paint all the way down to the other end of the bridge. They'd hop over to Bay Honda, and then they would start all over again. Took about a year and a half. Uh, these are all here because of their kids. When they get here, they go off snorkeling. They uh, write the name of everyone in their class, and then they hang it up from uh, the first year that we were doing that all the way down to the last year. Now, when Henry died, people will tell you that he died broke, untrue. They will tell you that this broke him, did not even dent his wallet. He died an extremely wealthy man. And on top of all his other assets, when Henry died, he had slightly more than 2 million acres of Florida land that he had not paid one penny. They say that Carnegie is the man on the Monopoly set, but Henry was the guy who had all the Monopoly laws changed. And look at that mustache. Uh, picture a little top hat, that's the Monopoly guy. <laughs> <laughs> this is the building that we could just walk through, and the other three were taken apart. This is where the engineers work, that was also taken apart. There's a little man right here, so that helps you uh, get an idea of scale. There were tents and tents and tents all the way down here. Uh, over here, you can see the chimneys from the cook stoves. Out here, it's the very end of the age of sail, right? A four-masted schooner right on the horizon. These are dining halls taken apart. And uh, my personal favorite here are the outhouses. Uh, one of them anyway. Uh, behind you here is a picture that to me is just the uh, quintessential, very sad death of a railroad. Uh, this was taken a, a couple of days, I would imagine, after uh, the September 2nd Labor Day hurricane. Uh, the train that's on its side there, this is up in Almorada, was the rescue train that was coming in to get the people who were working on the automobile road. But the train came in and they all climbed aboard saying, thank God, thank God, we're saved, we're saved. They got on the train and it was immediately hit with an 18-foot wall of water knocked the train off the tracks, all but a handful of people were washed out to sea and lost forever. I have to head back off the bridge and down to meet my little train. This is absolutely stunning. Here comes our train. I better hustle on down. I guess I have a few minutes. I have to load before, unload before I load. 